This video provides an overview of a couple of the features of the mud crab. Mud crabs have both structural and behavioural adaptation, which is what we're going to look at in this video. Firstly, the structural adaptations. Mud crabs have a hard exoskeleton. This means that the outside of their body provides the protection as well as structural strength for the animal. The little serrations along the edge of their shell are also part of the defence mechanism, and this is a way of actually protecting the animal against other animals which might attack it. Crabs have 10 legs. The first pair are specialised flattened back legs, which are flattened to help them swim in the water. The mud crab can swim considerable distances from the coastline, with the female crab actually swimming as far as the continental shelf in some cases. The other legs are quite pointed and they're used for walking and move between their burrows and along the creek banks. But when the tide is in, they use their back swimming legs to swim in the creeks and across the mud flats and mangroves. Another pair of legs are adapted to specifically be the cutters and crushers, or claws as we know them. These are used for cutting up their food and getting it to their mouth. Crabs use their claws like we use our teeth and fingers. The one crab claw is adapted for cutting. This one is the one with the sharp teeth. The other has flattened teeth, very similar to the ones at the back of your mouth, your molars, and these are used for crushing and grinding their food. When they are molting or shedding their bones, you'll actually see the claw is replaced and this little claw that has been a cutter may be changed into the crusher as the crusher is always the larger claw and is able to protect the animal. Their blood will clot when they come into contact with salt water. So when they throw a claw, the clotting process stops them from bleeding to death. You will see these little nodules on the side of some of them where they've had a hard scar or like a scratch or a bump when you have on your hand or your heel and that stops the blood coming to, out of their systems as well. Crabs' vision is really interesting. It's a structural adaptation to their environment as their eyes are a bit like a fly. They can see almost 360 degrees at the same time. Their eyes see movement, but it's not the type of movement that we see. It has no vision of depth. And so they actually have multiple images of the same item that move very quickly and sl or slowly for us are actually magnified so that they can see them moving and scurrying away. They smell or taste with the hairs on their legs and this way they're able to track down food in a creek which is muddy and difficult to see within. As they move along the mangroves and through the mud, they sense where their food is using these hairs. It also means that they can taste food with the hairs on their legs before it actually enters their mouth so that it is not suitable to be eaten or digested. It has not come into contact with the inner parts of their body. Behavioural adaptations. We'll look closely at a few of the behavioural adaptations of the crab. If the crab is feeling threatened, they'll throw or drop their claw. The idea is that the animal that is chasing them will then concentrate on the claw that is left behind and the animal will be able to get away. This is like a lizard as they can then regenerate the missing part so the claw will, will grow back. This is actually also a structural adaptation. This provides them with a level of defence that they will then be able to maintain. Female mud crabs will carry up to 6 million eggs at any time. This allows for many of them not to make it through the hatching and growing stages. Mud crabs have a life cycle similar to that of a frog in that the animal that hatches out of the egg does not look like the adult crab. In actual fact, it looks more like a mosquito wriggler. Mud crabs are active mainly at night because this reduces their risk of predation by seabirds and other animals that may be able to catch them in the wild. This obviously allows them to move around an environment when the tide is in and out. So at night, the moisture loss through evaporation is reduced. Mud crabs have, like fish, a gill system which allows them to breathe oxygen from the moisture and water that they carry in their shells. And they can breathe like a fish when underwater. You'll see the bubbles that the crab is producing. This is it filling its gill baler so that it can then walk along on the mud flats and sand flats when the tide is out. The fluctuating salinity levels of seawater is something that is hard to deal with and for crabs they move backwards and forwards along the edges of the mangroves as the sea level water changes in its salinity. In the middle of summer when the fresh water is falling as thunderstorms and large changes occur in the amount of salt in the water, these animals are able to move deeper down or out to sea. They will move out to sea if the freshwater levels increase to a very high extent, such as in a big flood, like the ones we had in Brisbane in 2011. At that stage, the crabs would have moved out of the estuarine environment and moved into the bay where the tide levels and salinity levels are not affected by the fresh water. 
as the salinity levels returns to a more level, stable environment, they will then move back into their estuarine habitat. The male crab will find a female when she is molting. He then carries her around for a considerable period of time before they mate in the burrow. This mating will allow the male to actually come across a female only two or three times throughout the year. She carries enough sperm to be able to fertilise two or three more batches of eggs without encountering a male. This helps in the breeding process with the animal as they do not often come across each other in the wild. Female crabs swim out into the ocean and release their eggs where the, where the plankton is in the middle of the ocean in a more stabilised salt environment as well as a more stable temperature. When they come back to the land however the little tiny crab who is about as small as your pinky fingernail will actually return to the same creek where its mother came from when she swam to the edge of the ocean and released the eggs. Returning to this environment is an important and interesting behavioural adaptation. This creek system, its home, will stay in a pristine condition allowing crabs to return and come and go. But if by chance the creek is polluted and the crabs cannot survive here, then baby crabs will not come in as there was no females who came from that creek for them to return to.